Hello, I'm Jean Bosman, Vice President and Principal Analyst of Hurwitz & Associates, and we're here today to speak about security. Uh, I'm here with Guy Caspi, who's uh, CEO of Deep Instinct. We're going to talk about security and the role that his company plays in it. Uh, we might as well dig right in. Uh, tell, us, tell us, Guy, about the name Deep Instinct. What does it mean? And then we'll go into how it works. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Jean. Good morning. Hi. The name of uh, Deep Instinct is actually a combination of uh, Deep Learning, which is the first world, which is a very unique technology I will elaborate later we are using. And the instinct actually is the ability that we created based on this technology, allowing us to act as real time when we recognize attack. Mm -hmm. So the combination of uh, those is Deep Instinct, right. a very fast instinct in responding to uh, attacks in the network. Mm -hmm. So obviously real time are two important words here. Tell us how do you achieve real time analysis and real time security? One of the most, I think, innovation uh, technology we implemented in the company is our ability to crunch a very small, tiny brain based on a very unique mathematics which is part of the artificial intelligence uh, methodologies the name is deep learning, is advanced methodologies of machine learning. Mm. And we, we did something which is very unique and we have the ability to crunch a very super fast, very powerful tool inside a mobile or a laptop, mm. allowing us to respond super fast, doesn't need all the processes which all the other companies have in huge servers mm -hmm. behind the network. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to guess here, but does it involve an accelerator or GPU or that kind of thing? How did you achieve that? Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is involved in GPUs. All the implementation of the company is on GPUs. Mm -hmm. This is something very unique. It's very hard today to implement software, especially deep learning, over graphical processing units. And this accelerates the process almost uh, mm -hmm. X100 mm -hmm. versus CPUs. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, we are the only company today in the world mm -hmm. that managed to crunch deep learning algorithm over GPUs. Wow, that is amazing. Well, let's talk about the customer's dilemmas, the challenges, and so on. I mean, we're attending a security conference. Obviously, it's a really big issue for people. And one of the things that we've been finding out recently is that it may be many days, 100 days or more until many customers even realize that they're being attacked or being breached. Why is that and how does your solution help address you know, this to, to find out earlier that, that they're having a security problem? Well, that's correct. It's even worse in some of the cases is six, seven, eight months. Uh, yeah. The whole methodology of protecting network today mm -hmm. in the world is based on a perimeter technologies. Mm -hmm. We have some very large corporate and enterprise like Checkpoint, like FireEye, like Fortinet, mm -hmm. like uh, Palo Alto, which mm -hmm. are all 90% of their business is mm -hmm. to protect, let's say, the fence of your organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not important anymore because mm -hmm. the vectors of attack mm -hmm. today are not based on the ability of crossing this fence. They are based on a much more sophisticated abilities mm. to cross this system and have some very quiet, sometimes sleeping malwares that have the right moment and mm. the right time in the network to be open and then to attack, to retrieve information, to send information, mm. to steal money from banks like Morgan Stanley mm. had mm. and some others. So actually and sleeping for a while. Yes, huh? yes, most of them are sleeping for a certain period. The whole idea of the, I would call this the old world, was based on behavior analysis, mm -hmm. signature based, the ability to analyze yesterday mm -hmm. and by that to forecast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is not valid anymore mm -hmm. because the tomorrow malwares are 80% mm -hmm. of the uh, malwares that we are facing every day. Mm -hmm. The amount of zero days of APTs that are new every day in the game yeah. are <coughs> huge, yeah. almost one million. One so million? One million per day. 1 million oh new APTs per day. And please spell out for the audience what APT is. I know APT, we all know. Right? Okay, APT is Advanced Persistent Threat. Okay. These are the most sophisticated mutations mm -hmm. of viruses and malwares, mm -hmm. which are very unique and they are almost cannot be seen by mm -hmm. the old technology. Mm -hmm. 
our technology is mm. very different. Mm -hmm. What di we did is actually like you, we map the gene of the cyber, like mm. uh, the mapping of the gene of the, the human. Oh, the genome. The yeah. genome, yes. So actually we couldn't care less mm. if it's a new or old or a very sophisticated mm. malware because we have some formula that knows to understand mm -hmm. based on a very unique technology mm -hmm. named deep learning, mm -hmm. this is a malware mm -hmm. versus this is not a malware. Mm -hmm. And this is something very unique because mm -hmm. we deal with all the new one, mm -hmm. zero days and APT, mm -hmm. the most sophisticated attack. And these are mm -hmm. the most important mm -hmm. one because the mm -hmm. other ones mm -hmm. are less important today mm -hmm. in the cyber domain of uh, attack. Mm -hmm. They are creating edX. Sometimes you mm -hmm. don't have a website uh, operating, mm -hmm. but they are not very uh, damaging in terms of organization. Mm -hmm. What happens to Target, what happens to eBay, what mm -hmm. happens to Morgan Stanley, Sony. These are the Stanley, big, well Sony. publicized attacks. Yes, yeah. these are the most sophisticated attacks, mm -hmm. and we have one million like this every day. Is that worldwide? Or? Well, no, or, mainly in the US, US market. Yeah. Worldwide is a bit Even less, it's 30% less. Okay. Yes. They're happening there too. Unfortunately, the and, and North America. And speaking about worldwide, a lot of attacks do come ultimately from outside. You know, if we're sitting here in the U.S., many of them do come from outside the U.S. Is there a different way of detecting that, or the same thing? No, it's the same thing. We couldn't care less if the where it comes uh, from. If the malware is Chinese, <laughs> Russian, whatever, French, or whatever, wherever it yes. comes from. Yes. Yeah, I was. I was just going to ask. Um, you know, uh, how has that approach changed over time? What did you guys, you know, what was that moment in your company where you said, ah, we have to take a different approach? How did that come about? Yeah. Actually, we are all coming from uh, PhD level in mathematics oh, and artificial intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you are looking what was happening in the world mm -hmm. in other domains like uh, computer vision, right. like voice recognition, like mm -hmm. text analysis, mm -hmm. The breakthrough in the mm -hmm. last uh, two, three years, achieved mainly by the giants, by Google, by Facebook, by Microsoft, mm -hmm. yeah. were all based on deep learning. Oh. And one day, we uh, just were talking, if this was not successful to some other domain, why not to implement this in cybersecurity? Maybe oh. it will be very successful in cybersecurity as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And very then good. this is this was the idea in implementing this company. Right. So let me zero in on the customer, on the user as we sometimes call them. Um, how did they approach you? How do you approach them? Uh, how do they realize they need this kind of help? You know, how do you do so outreach think, to them? Yeah. I think that today uh, in the market uh, there is a, a huge problem of selling to enterprise in the U.S. Mm -hmm. They are getting more than 100 requests per month hmm. for seeing companies, for proof of concept, for mm -hmm. many others. We have a very unique approach also in the way we are selling. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't work with distributors. Mm -hmm. We don't work with the low level. We just mm -hmm. talk with the high level, CEO level mm -hmm. or CX level mm -hmm. with the organization because mm -hmm. today cybersecurity mm -hmm. became the most important mm -hmm. conversation of the old board of directors yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. We are working with the highest level of mm. the Fortune 500 mm. company, mm -hmm. and this is the methodology. And, so and the door is open. So it's a CXO kind of level. It's, it's a CXO level. Chief security it's officer. Becoming, yeah, even more than this. It mm. became a CEO problem. Because if anything happens, it, it affects yes. the whole uh, outcome on the company. Yes, I yeah. think Target was the first event when the CEO mm. lost his job. But wow. uh, after this event, there were some others mm -hmm. that lost the job, and today, yeah. it's a, it's a very, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's a problem which yeah. are not anymore mm -hmm. the CISO and mm -hmm. the security problem. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a board level problem. Uh, right. Uh, no, that's problem a great point. And challenges. And also, it's interesting to me having covered availability and high availability and disaster recovery for so many years. How security is actually connected there because of security problems, we can actually have availability problems. Do you want to comment on that a little bit, the connection between the two, the availability, lack of uptime, if you will, because you have to shut things down? Or? You mean the availability of the network? Availability the of the network, and, the system, uh, the applications. What is happening in terms of uh, attack? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. it's a big problem. Uh, however, it's been, uh, it's not mainly the problem of the cybersecurity industry. Okay. 
is the problem of the other system that need to overcome an attack yep. and, and have some contingency plans mm -hmm. of what is happening if a certain part of the network exactly. is down. Exactly. exactly. And now we want to talk about your solution a little bit more. You talked about the math, the GPU, but give us an idea, you know, if we decide to engage with you, uh, your company, uh, what does the solution look like? How do you implement it? Okay, the first is something very unique also implementation-wise. Mm -hmm. The implementation is super fast. It's two days. Wow. It's, uh, it's done. Mm -hmm. uh, we just uh, send, based on some network elements, mm -hmm. a very small, tiny, this brain, into the mobile phones, servers, and PCs, or laptops, or any mm -hmm. device which is in the network of specific organization. Oh, wow. And that's it you are fully protected mm. uh, from time to time. There is a connectivity mm -hmm. via a very small server appliance which is in the network, mm -hmm. and that's it. It's a very simple uh, installation. So you're saying all servers would get something? All yes. servers? Yes, servers, Linux, Windows, iOS, all gonna get Android, yes. A small, tiny small, piece, tiny yes, piece. that will protect you. And, and the, the end devices as well. At the end devices right. and the server and the PCs. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of mm -hmm. deep learning is that mm -hmm. this methodology is agnostic to infrastructure. So mm -hmm. we, unlike okay. others, couldn't care less if you have iPhone 6, iPhone 5, iPhone 4, mm -hmm. this iOS or the other iOS, or mm -hmm. if it's uh, Android mm -hmm. or it's... It's not uh, dependent others. on the OS? No. At all? Not OS, not on the hardware, mm -hmm. not on the operating system. But there is software. So is it in firmware? It's not firmware, it's but the software is, is not relevant to what is running sure. below. No. Maybe Something so. very unique. Usually when you're dealing with mm -hmm. cybersecurity, mm -hmm. the software need to understand the level below and is there is some discussion mm -hmm. between these two levels. Mm -hmm. In our solution, we couldn't care less what is running the systems. Yeah. I, I want to, before we end up here, I want to talk about business value and you've hinted at it. This is a board level discussion about security and protecting the company. But tell us more, okay, you've done the implementation, people are using it. Tell us about the business value that people get out of it in whatever way you'd like to express that. So first, one of the most uh, crucial problems today in the industry is that out of all this security, mm -hmm. you have this terminology, which I'm sure you heard, false positive. So false positive is becoming, getting crazy, all this enterprise, because what it means is that out of 10 documents you're supposed to get today, mm -hmm. you are maybe, mm -hmm. four of them was categorized like a malware, but they're okay. So you miss your documents. Mm. The other way around is that you got something which is very bad, mm -hmm. but it is okay. So there are certain problems with the false positive. Mm -hmm. If you ask today some CIOs of organization, they will tell you it's one of the most crucial problems in the world mm. because documents today are being prevented on the spot and the false positive is huge in most of the companies. Mm. So business-wise, for your question, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to have better solutions mm -hmm. with a very tiny, small, mm -hmm. less than one digit false positive, mm -hmm. allowing you uh, better business communication. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, mm -hmm. our system allowing you more freedom mm -hmm. in the way you can act as a corporate, mm -hmm. because our system doesn't have any updates. So we couldn't care less. If you right. take your PC or mobile, home mm -hmm. or for a coffee shop mm -hmm. or even you're flying while you are walking for mm -hmm. a certain corporate mm -hmm. from New York to Boston, yep. you're still protected. In wow. most other cases, you're protected only in the network of the organization. Right, but here it's instantiated, implemented Correct. right in the devices. And it's working 24-7, doesn't need any updates. So there yeah. is a business uh, issue behind this, is allowing you more flexibility. Yeah. Well, in the way you are communicating. That's great. I think we have to wrap up here. But okay. but how can people find you? I'm sure you have a great website and so on and so forth. Uh, how can they find you? How can they interact with you? Is it all described on your website? So first, we are in the all important event. You can see deep learning and deep. Uh, uh, yeah, in in the conference. Deep learning in the artificial mm -hmm. intelligence more community, uh, deep instinct as a company, mm -hmm. more in the conferences around the world. Okay mainly in the U.S. market. Okay. We have office here in Folsom, in San Francisco. Folsom in San Francisco. Yes, right? yes, for the yeah. past year. We have yeah. an office in Mexico. We have an office in uh, Paris. We have office in Tel Aviv. Well, that's important. We're very active. Right. 
Okay. Uh, I think it's easy. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining us Thank here you. today. Thank you for this having me. This was really fun. I learned stuff. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much.